Yeah, we're going to bring our second storyteller to the stage. This is a first time storyteller, so you know what the code is. Love, love, love. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Martez Gibbs. about a young man who's been out of school for uh, seven months. I've been out of school for seven months. Although, I never really liked school much anyways, but I'm starting to miss parts of it, and I'm starting to be concerned about my future. Let me tell you about what happened the day I got kicked out. I was in a bit of a hurry, woke up late for the bus. I had to brush my teeth, eat, get dressed, and make my lunch in about half the time that I would normally have. So, go downstairs, get ready, grab a bagel, then I begin to make my lunch. My lunch consisted of a PB&J sandwich, tortilla chips and cheese, <laughs> water, and an apple. Now, there was a small paring knife on the counter left out from the night before. So, I grabbed it so that I could peel my apple in school. See. I don't like chewing the skin of the apple, like you have to chew and chew and chew, and then I have to find somewhere to spit it out, because I can't force myself to swallow it, because it's like chewing a leaf. <laughs> so I bought the knife to school so that I could peel the apple. Now, the knife was, had a green handle with polka dots on it, a real cute knife, it came to say. <laughs> so I get to school, I ate and peeled the apple before first hour in the cafeteria without incident. Now, second hour comes, the teacher tells us that she's gonna give us five minutes to study over our packets, which I didn't do before the test comes. Now, seeing as I didn't study anyway, I feel like I'm gonna bomb the test, but I should probably try, right? So, as I'm writing my name on the test, the pencil breaks. Oh. So, so now, I realized I didn't have one of those handheld sharpeners, and the hunk of junk in the uh, front of the classroom was missing a screw on the left side. It made a <laughs> loud, screeching, rusty noise when you use it, and it didn't do a very good job. On top of the fact that I don't like drawing a lot of attention to myself. So for me to go up in front of a quiet class of nervous students taking a test to use a rusty pencil sharpener wouldn't do me any favors. So at that point, I thought about, I still have the knife. Yeah. And I could just use that. Now at the time, I was feeling pretty good about myself, thinking of that. <laughs> no, uh, not so much. So, pull out the pencil, pull out the knife, go under the desk, and I start to sharpen. About half a minute into it, the teacher comes over, and she asks, what was I doing under the desk? I said, sharpening my pencil. I show her the pencil, show her the knife. She then asks if she could have the knife. I hand it over without incident. She turns and starts to walk away. And before she gets to her desk, I go, wait. She turns back around, and I give her the knife guard. She then, <laughs> she then goes to the desk, gets on the phone, and calls the office and says, I have a student with a knife. At that point, the office comes down and gets me, and a very nice police officer explains to me the trouble that I'm in. She then asked me if I had any other weapons. I told her I had scissors and some toenail clippers. <laughs> she, asked for them, she asked for them both, and then she later gave them back. At that point, my mom came and picked me up, and a hearing was scheduled to determine my punishment. My mom, dad, and SAC advocate showed up to my hearing. I was a nervous wreck. I felt like I had did something stupid, but nothing untrustworthy. Everybody kept telling me how big of a deal it was. But even the principal herself said that, she, that I was a bad kid and she didn't consider me a danger. They still suspended me. I guess it was because of all the nervousness and panics over the school shootings and they figured they'd throw one student under the bus on the off chance that I might snap and they you know, so people couldn't say, oh, we guys were lazy or incompetent. So I was suspended for a year because I like apples. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens to me next? I get a homebound teacher named Liz, and she would meet with me two or three times a week for one or two hours a day. Now, I still don't understand how they thought 
a few times a week at a few hours a day was adequate enough for 35 hours of schooling. On top of the fact that I did work that I can't even get credit for because someone forgot to send an email. Now, my homebound teachers and the teachers at school are talking, so what's going on with the emails? So it's like, I don't think they care. I don't think it's that they're forgetful. I just don't think they care. Now, mind you, I never really liked school anyway, uh, so, but I was starting to miss it. And um, the work felt very, 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 very busy. And, if, and in some classes, all I could do was just read. So, so you know, the other day, um, I reassembled and painted a Nerf gun for this kid because it was interesting to me. But if you ask me to sit down and write three to five sentences about my summer, up oh, three it is. I'm gonna always do the minimum consistently. I was lazy. <clears throat> so, you know, even though I didn't care for school, I am starting to miss my friends, the cheesy breadsticks. Oh, man. <laughs> and I'm starting to miss wrestling and my German teacher. So, this summer I'm going on a vacation with my family. And hopefully next year I'll be able to go back to school, but not my old school, screw that place. It's time for me to get my life back on track. I know I'll have to buckle down. You know, I, I really don't eat apples anymore, but I definitely, definitely don't want that apple to determine my future. Mm -hmm.